What's up, guys? It's the Moving Junk Guy, owner of New Beginnings Moving and Hauling. Uh, we're a moving and hauling company in Pennsylvania, right outside of Philly. Um, I really started this channel so I can give some tips and some uh, feedback and some different challenges and wins and all that that I've experienced over my first two years being in this industry. A um, little background. I have no, I had no experience in moving, hauling, junk removal, any of that kind of just came to me one day. It was like, yo, let me, uh, let me start this. So, um, started two years ago, right before the pandemic with one truck. <laughs> I had my 99 Chevy S10. And I got it specifically so I can haul junk. You can tell that I really didn't know much about junk removal or what it entailed or weight or any of things like that because of the fact that a Chevy S10 can't haul squat. I mean, it's 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 reality. Um, but it, I may do with it for one, two, three, four, five, about five months five months when I was doing it more so part-time loading up stuff getting it done um, and I made do with it it worked and then I got and then I upgraded got a um, box truck used that for a little bit and then I got another box truck even bigger one so now I have two and that's kind of my fleet right now I, I balance between moving and junk removal I uh, <laughs> Last year, moving was so good that I kind of left junk removal in the dust. But this year, I'm back and I'm uh, trying to revive that part of the business. So, I came today just to give some tips. Actually, not even tips, but the biggest five mistakes that I made my first year in this industry with junk removal specifically. So, number one. Huh. The first biggest mistake that I've made in junk removal is not having standardized pricing. This was such a, this, <laughs> I didn't even know where to start with pricing, if I'm being completely honest. Didn't know where to start with pricing at all. And if I'm being really, really honest with y'all, I just created my standardized pricing sheet, booklet, infographic, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it actually works like a charm. It's so, it makes me feel so much more confident in quoting and giving prices to people and all that. Because I'm not guessing off the top or being like, oh, I think it'll be this or I think it'll be that. So that is number one. Um, so many times <laughs> I didn't know how to quote people. I am almost a hundred percent sure that I probably bid myself out of plenty of jobs or I probably underbid plenty of jobs, um, which sucks. Um, and that leads me to number two, get help. <laughs> and when I say get help, I mean hire, hire, hire people. Whether if it's a full-time person, part-time person, daytime help, a laborer, whatever. Um, there's so many different resources out there to really get it done. Um, my first year, my first six months, I'll say. Yeah, my first six or seven months, I did it all on my own. Just me. Um, it felt like a uh, badge of honor and an accomplishment, but I, I felt like I was putting a lot of miles on my body. And although I could do it, I felt it after. And uh, I was still trying to balance being in the gym every day also. So those two physical things compounded every single day, five days a week, wasn't the best. Um, so get help. After I got help, business started taking off, hired my first employee um, in November of 2020. And then um, he was really good. Uh, he still works with me 
full time now uh, manager. And um, yeah, get help because you don't really count on how long something could take. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why you want to have more than one person doing a job. For instance, you don't want to be banging up people's walls and their house and everything like that, trying to maneuver heavy items or furniture or whatever it is alone. It doesn't make any sense. It, it really doesn't. Now, now um, you're getting bad reviews because you just put a hole in somebody's wall and um, and now they don't want to use you anymore. And in this business, a lot of the a lot of the business comes from repeat business or referrals, um, and just reputation. That's that's one of the biggest things I learned. Um, so I'll say this: get help quick. Start with help. If you can't afford to pay someone, which I don't think that that's possible, because you just kind of build it into your pricing. Build it into your pricing. I personally don't charge for labor. Um, I'm, a, I'm a member of a lot of different junk removal groups on Facebook, and I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube, a lot of the bigger guys out there. Um, I don't personally charge for labor to the customer, specifically. Um, I just have everything built into my pricing. So I just kind of divvy it up like that. Um, I, I have noticed that I am able to do that. I, I, let me not get let, let me not get ahead of myself. So get help. That's step one. I mean that's step two. Biggest mistake: uh, not having enough help. Step three: not having the proper insurances. You want to make sure that you're a hundred percent legit. Not having the right insurances is so huge because of the fact that. To my earlier point about having help and not banging up people's furn uh, furniture and their house and their home and all of that, when you do bang up somebody's stuff, because it's bound to happen, it's human error, it happens, it's okay. Most of the time, homeowners understand as long as you have insurance, because then you can just put a claim in and boom, bang, boom. Uh, they're not liable, they get their stuff fixed you get the job done and they feel peace of mind, they still might, you know, be a little salty, but, uh, I mean, what can you do besides put in a claim and get them their, uh, their house fixed or whatever? Um, I see a lot of people without insurance and I don't understand why general liability for a junk removal company is so cheap. And I can say that because I have a reference point for you. Um, I personally use Next Insurance for my junk removal general liability insurance. Um, very cheap, like 50 bucks a month or something like that. And that kind of covers me for when me or my guys or somebody goes into somebody's home, remove something, they scratch up a wall or they bang up something. I've had to use it a few times, not too often. Uh, we're actually pretty careful, which is really good. Um, but in comparison, and why I say that it's so cheap, $50 a month, because I said that I also operate a moving company. Moving is so much more regulated and you have to have so much higher insurances. Um, and it, without going into too much detail, moving insurance, uh, also known as cargo insurance. There's also the commercial vehicle insurance that goes with it. Then you gotta have your GL, which is your general liability. Um, you're looking at twelve hundred fifteen hundred dollars a month um and it could go either way you know plus or minus that depending on your personal driving record your personal circumstances um but yeah you get the idea fifty dollars or um fifteen hundred dollars i like i said i operate both so that kind of answers that question for you yes i pay both um Moving is, is pretty uh, lucrative, so I'll say that. 
Number three, that was have the right insurances. So, so important, guys. Make sure you get your insurances. If I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, number four. Number four. When you hire people, make sure you get the right people. Uh, reliability. Reliability is so key in junk removal and moving and all that. Um, because... Think about it like this, your company, your business, if you're a business owner, um, you own this thing, it's your baby, it's it's your entity. Um, you know, people go online to find you, you don't want them finding a bunch of bad reviews, um, especially ones that say you're unreliable. And I understand that this is junk removal, and a lot of people think, yeah, it was just junk removal, somebody just coming and picking up trash, but people do look at reviews. If they didn't, then there would be no competitive advantage over other people. Uh, besides, like, the people who are more well-known, like the 1-800-GOT-JUNKS, the junk luggers, the um, u haul it's whatever, all those. But those are big names, but you look at their reviews, they're kind of, they're kind of, they're kind of garbage. But when you're a small business, like most of us, Reviews will make or break you. So make sure that you have reliable people that are going to show up on time, get there, do what they need to do, be nice to the customers. It's like, it's, it's huge customer service. Customer service is huge. I have been fortunate to have most of my employees that I've employed be very, very personable, uh, polite, nice friendly all that i've also had the other side where i've had people who are unreliable call out every day um or they um they don't show up or they show up and maybe they're high because this is one of those industries let's keep it a being uh they're high i've had people show up drunk um i've had people almost fight uh <laughs> I've had people almost fight while they're at a customer site. Um, and that was a, a crazy experience because of the fact that this is when I was in a pinch. So I really needed guys, day laborers. Um, and in the town that I'm in, you can pick up like a, like a couple homeless people and they'll like do some, they'll do some work for you for the day for some cash. Um, and these two guys, that didn't get along. And, you know, it was... It was a challenge, to say the least. They were about to fight in front of the customer. I had to calm them down. It's like, you know, you're, what's going through your mind is like, yo, what is about to go on? So, that's, that's number four. Make sure you have reliable people. And number five, number five, biggest mistake. Number five, biggest mistake. Calculate your costs. One. And two, make sure you put money aside for everything. Everything that you get in in your sales is not your profit. It's not all profit, trust me. For those of you who don't own your truck, your trucks, truck, trucks, whatever, you gotta think about that cost. You gotta pay for your lease. I understand that you're leasing this truck to make money, but that cuts into your cost. So you got your lease for some of us. I own both of my trucks, so I don't have that problem. Um, you got your lease. You got uh, salaries for the people that you're paying to work with you. So you got to take that out. Uh, if you're legit, you got to think about your insurance costs, factoring a little bit of those costs into your prices, breaking that out. Uh, your workman's comp, your vehicle insurance, um, what else, what else, what else? Your taxes, um, your other overhead that you may or may not have. I don't know if you have a uh, warehouse or a building that you house your trucks, but you factor in that price. Um, and it's just a, a myriad of different expenses. But I say all this to say, make sure that you factor those things in. Don't go get all your money. Like, don't go, don't go do a $500 job uh, and think, oh, I forgot dumping fees. Um, 
dumping fees. That's that's huge. Everybody's dump fees are different, so I can't really factor in yours. My ours is ninety five dollars a ton in PA. Um, but you got to factor that in. Um, <laughs> you really do. People think that if they did a five hundred dollar job, they made five hundred dollars. Uh, but that's not necessarily the case. You, <laughs> you got to factor in all those costs, bro. Um, and then, you know, that's that's five right there. So you got one, you got... Um, make sure that you do those things. Make sure you avoid those things specifically. I'm telling you, it'll, it'll save you a lot of time. It'll save you a lot of heartbreak. It'll save you a lot of cash. And we're in this business to make money. So, uh, like I said, I am on this channel, the moving junk guy, uh, to spread tips, to give feedback, to, to guide you guys, to build a community of, uh, like-minded people, like-minded business owners, just to kind of get this done. And, you know, uh, hopefully cultivate the next generation of junk removal, uh, people, the next generation of, uh, business owners that are in this industry. And um, any way that I can help, let me know. Uh, like, subscribe, share this with somebody that you feel that may it may be valuable for. I'll have some more content for you guys next week. I'll be dropping every week uh, some new valuable tips. Sometimes I'll be talking about junk removal. Sometimes I'll be talking about moving because I I have uh, the experience of doing both. And um, you know, you guys, uh, happy junking. Peace out, and I'll talk to you guys next week.